All right, let's do the second problem for the view review for the final exam. So in this question, what we have, we have a VS as the input to our circuit and AC voltage. It is 110 with the angle of zero. Then we have RL and C. The series on of, of RL and C is our load. So together they will uh, give us the load. And then RS is 2 ohm that we have between the source and the load. So the other thing that they have defined over here for us is that F, the frequency is equal to 60 hertz. What I have to find here is S, that is the complex power, and I want the complex power for this complex load. So first I need to have, uh, first I need to find P, P average, and then the Q in order to find the S that is my complex power, okay? So what I can do here is that First thing, I have to know that I have to go to the phasor domain in order to find the complex power, right? So what I have to have, my Vs is already in the phasor domain. I have to take C, uh, actually my load, to the phasor domain as well. So we said that the load, so the impedance of the load is the impedance of RL plus the impedance of the capacitor because the capacitor in series with the RL is uh, giving us the load. So now C of C is equal to 1 over J omega C. And that is equal to 1 over, now here I have J. Omega is 2 pi multiplied by F, right? 2 pi 60. And then C is 2000, 10 to the negative 6 because we have it as microfarads. Okay? So that will give us negative J 1.326, okay? Now, this is my ZC, so if I substitute in the above equation, RL was 5, right? So that would be 5 minus J 1.326. And if I take this to the phasor domain, I'm going to get 5 point one seven three with the angle of negative zero point two fifty nine so here I found the uh, impedance of my load okay so now that I have the impedance of the load what I can do I can go ahead and find the voltage and the current of the load in order to find the complex power so let's go up here and let's just review what we had before. We know that S is equal to the RMS of the voltage multiplied by the complex conjugate of the current, the RMS complex conjugate of the current. So if I find the RMS of VL and the RMS of IL, I can easily find S and when I have S, I can easily find the average power and Q, that is the reactive power, okay? So what I'm going to do here, Vs that is given in the question is actually in RMS. So if I use this Vs, I can find my um, RMS load voltage and RMS load current. So let's do it this way. Let me make this smaller. Okay. VL that is the RMS value of the load voltage, if I use the voltage divider, I can write this as ZL, that is the impedance of the load over ZL plus RS. Now this multiplied by VS. So I just use the voltage divider in order to find the RMS value of the uh, load voltage. Why is it the RMS value? Because the RMS, uh, the input that I have, Vs, is already in the RMS format. So that will give us 5 minus J1.326, that is my ZL, over, now, RS. What is RS? RS is 2 ohms, right? So that is RS plus ZL. So it will be 7 minus J. 1.326 that multiplied by 110 which is my um, uh, the input voltage and let me write it as 110 with the angle of zero 
okay so that will give us if we calculate that we're going to get 79.66 with the angle of negative 0 0.072 volts that would be my vl the <clears throat> voltage across the load but in the rms format so now i have the rms load voltage and I have the ZL, that is the impedance of the load. So I can easily find the RMS load current. So IL, the RMS IL will be equal to VL over ZL, that is the Ohm's law, right? So now VL is 79.66 with the angle of negative 0.072 volts over my ZL and then ZL was 5.1 oops 5.173 with the angle of negative 0 0.259 right and that will give us 15.44 with the angle of 0 0.187 amps now I have IL and I have VL, so I can find the S, that is my complex power. So we said that S is equal to VL, the RMS value, multiplied by the complex conjugate of the RMS of the current. So VL is equal to 79.63 with the angle of negative 0.072 multiply by the complex conjugate of the current so the current is 15.44 with the angle of 0 0.187 now the complex conjugate will be the same amplitude so it is 15.44 but with the negative angle because we are writing the um, complex conjugate so that would be negative 0 0.187 when i multiply these two i'm going to get one so it's 1,233 with the angle of negative 0 0.529. And if I take this to the rectangular format, my S will be equal to 1,192 minus J316 watts. Now, here I can say that this is my p average and this is my q okay so don't forget that the q has the negative as well so technically my q is equal to negative 316 right and then the p average is equal to 100 1192 watts so this is what this is var which is volt amp react okay so this was a question on the complex power. So don't forget that we have these two, um, sorry, this formula for the complex power. So I can use this formula or this one based on what I have available in the circuit. All right. So I'm going to stop this video and I'm going to continue in the next video.